All right, well, there's the insides. Now, you'd play it from over here. These are the manuals. Um, I don't know if you can see the thumb pistons. Let me get my flashlight out. Okay, the thumb pistons are the little round buttons down there. This one closest here is zero, zero. That's all cancel. That turns all the presets off. Then you have zero, which is just cancel for that manual. And then one, two, three, four. And the farthest one down there is uh, full organ. You push that and it turns everything on. And then this manual has some of the same. But there's also one for the pedals down here. A set of four. Now, these up here are tabs. These are three that I've added um, for the power, for the DC rectifier, the blower, and the MIDI system that I've designed. Um, <coughs> and these are for the upper manual, and these are for the lower manual. Basically, push them on and off. Now, this is actually pushed back in. It's not mounted correctly where it should be. It should be up farther like that so that you can get to these better. Um, these are what turns the pipes on and off for the lower manual. And these are what turn the pipes on and off for the upper manual. The pedal is actually these first set of stop tabs. And then these tabs over here control the lower manual. And these are all different sounds. And those are all flue pipes. Then up here are the reed pipes. And then these three are called couplers. This is the tremolo and these two are couplers, swell 4 and swell 16. There are also couplers down here and tremolo as well and the chimes are down here on the great manual. Now the inside of the organ is similar to the bass pedals that I showed you. Um, there are solenoids over here that basically pull up a little catch and then when you activate it this big solenoid right here will pull like this and if these little little solenoids have pushed one of the catches down it will pull these bars over or leave them back and what that does is there's little switches in here that rock these back and forth this is connected to the tab there that you can see moving by itself. So I can't make it function because I can't flip the little things underneath these solenoids without electricity on them, without some, some DC. But basically, this would shuttle a big thump and shuttle all those over and it would set a whole bunch of these wherever you had them set. Now that's for the lower manual. That's part that I've added to this organ. The upper manual, these are electric actions. There's two small coils in here, one on the top and one on the bottom, and they basically do the same thing. They pull that tab on or off like that. Now I've rewired this. This whole console has been rewired, and the wires are basically just um, down there waiting to be connected to whatever kind of a board that I use to connect them all up. Now the key manuals work the same way as the pedal. Those are down there. And as you can see as I play the, the organ keys, those move. And all the, the, the stop action, this is called the stop action because it moves the stops, and the key action and the pedal action that I showed you earlier that was outside not installed yet all came from the new newer organ uh, out of the actually the half an organ that I got um, I got the, the the console which is what you call this whole big piece of furniture is the console and some pipes I got out of an organ in Remsen New York that they replaced with an electronic one and the organ was kind of a mishmash so, but the console was in really good shape, <clears throat> except it was plywood. This is all solid, solid wood. Well, 
what they considered solid wood in the 20s. This is actually a 1926 organ. This is actually a type of plywood, but it's it's handmade. It's a solid board with veneer on both sides. I believe this is all mahogany. And the outer part is, of course, oak. And it's it's paneled. It needs to be worked on. It's been sitting out here in the barn for quite a few years, and uh, some of the joints have come loose. But as soon as I get the house done, I will be putting it back together. So that's how that works. Um, I'll get into the actual nitty gritty of it inside with some diagrams in a little bit, in one of the later sections. So I thought you all might be interested to see how big one of these blowers is. Um, this is the blower from the Buell organ out of Utica. That's my size 12. So you can see how big this thing is. It's probably about three foot across. Uh, this is a Spencer turbine. This is, I don't know if this one's labeled or not. This puts out five inches of pressure. It's got a two foot fan in it, two of them. It says it's supposed to have a three quarter horse motor. But I think it's got a, I think it's a, well that's a three quarter horse motor. It's a very old brush style motor. When the thing fires up those brushes snap out and put it into the high speed. Um, the way these used to generate the DC was on the output shaft of the motor, which is right there, would be a pulley, and it would run one of these generators. Now the top one came from, I believe the top one came from the New Jersey organ, and the bottom one came from this organ, or I can't remember. Maybe the bottom one came from the Jersey organ. <clears throat> but these are DC, DC generators. That one puts out, um, 10 volts at 10 amps. And that's what would run all the solenoids that uh, run the actual pipes when you press the keys down. So that's that's one of the blowers. My brother and I actually dragged this out of the church's basement. Just he and I slid this up out of the basement steps. And it is heavy. So now usually the blower was in a room that drew its air from the upstairs of the building. At least that's the way it should be designed because you don't want to draw the, the cool damp air from the basement because it, the coolness will affect the metal pipes tuning and the dampness will affect the wooden pipes tuning. So you want it to draw air from the same room that the pipes are actually in if at all possible. Well, the boilers make quite a bit of noise, so most of the time it was in a room in the basement that was well insulated and uh, drew its air from upstairs. So, and those flaps there are to keep the drafts out when the thing is off. And when it starts up, I can't get my finger under there. When it starts up, these will obviously lift up from the pressure. Yeah, I can't, I can't lift my finger under there. Those will flap up from the pressure. So that's basically that. Now organ pipes, those there, the ceiling in this barn is 10 feet. So that tallest one is probably about 11 and a half foot poking up above my ceiling. <clears throat> those are, those would be part of the, the Borden or the, the lowest fundamental notes of the organ. Now that's sitting right on the of skid inside this box so that's actual actual height minus about six inches now those are some of the wind chests that I mentioned earlier each one of them holes is where a, an organ pipe would sit and receive its air from the chest underneath and I'll explain all that in the future videos future segments so that's basically my major project that I'll someday hopefully get back together. I did have some of these pipes hooked up in my house when I first got it just to see what it was like and it was fantastic. But uh, not as loud as you would think but um, definitely sounded nice. So 
I'll catch up with you guys in the next section.